Good afternoon. How are you? How many of you have been to China? Please raise your hand. That's great. How much you know about China? Everything. Everything. Thank you very much. I should finish here. I accomplished my mission here. Let's play a video to see how this person talk about China. Let's say China. <laughs> China. 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 You go over to China. 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 You take China. 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 I love them. China. 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 I have to have my China. China. China because China. 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 Now China. China. You know. China. I know China very well. China, 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 China. Northwest Wisconsin, where I'm from. It's China to me. China, 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 China. You want to buy from China? That's great. Buy from China. Buy toys from China. China in particular. China, China. I have people that I know in China. China, 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 China. China, 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 China. I've been saying China, 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 China. Okay, let's give him a round of applause for the best person in the world to speak about China. Now we're laughing at him, and. Maybe you're one of him. Maybe you also talk about China, but actually don't know about China. That's why my friend Louis, the organizer, always invite me to stand on this stage to give you some idea. Where are you, Louis? Yeah, he always give him a round of applause. He's so visionary about China, and he's always thinking about China because I have personally brought him to China, open his eye to see. How different China is from what he usually see. So, can you bring up the slides, please? So today I want to give you a very quick. I only have 20 minutes, which is a challenge. Driving growth through blockchain in China. Now we're going to talk about lots of good stuff here. First, the number of blockchain patents globally in 2016. This is the number we have so far. The U.S. is 60, China is 88, Europe as a whole was, is 40. So you can see China is really, really catching up in the blockchain technology. You know, China has missed a lot in the global economic development in the past few centuries. But now they're really catching up on the internet, mobile internet, AI technology, and blockchain. So if we look at the number of the patent application from China in 2017, China has 550 of them. This number for U.S. is about half, 284. And from South Korea is 192. You can see the, the mere size of the people and startups and technology companies, commercial companies who are involved and participating in the blockchain is growing and it's enormous. There's one thing China has that is a lot of people. You, you know how many people China has? 1.38 billion population, yeah? So now China is opening up for the two-child policy. Before, it only allowed one child. Now, the family are allowed to have two child. So you will start to see a huge, huge capital and a huge, huge investment in the blockchain technology here. And China now are number two in terms of the blockchain enterprises in the world and second to the America. There's 80 to $110 billion in terms of the benefit by 2020 by McKinsey Company. They always predict wrong, so I think this will be wrong as well. But give you some idea of that. <laughs> So China has 160 blockchain enterprises here. You can see some of the large Chinese blockchain companies who are using it because you know China is a large manufacturing country and we are also very big in service. Foxconn, you know, iPhone are mostly produced in China through Foxconn. 
have a blockchain initiative. One dark group, which is the Chinese large real estate company, they also have blockchain initiative. Alibaba groups, their chairman, Jack Ma, was one of our students at our business school, also have a large blockchain initiative, including the, the People's Bank of China. I will give you very clear explanation of what they are doing later on, so be, be patient for that. The number of blockchain startups in China are over 100. I mean, this number was from the official data, but the real startups, what we see, is much more than this. You know, in China, we don't have good statistics. Sometimes it's exaggerated, sometimes it's downgraded, so we never get it right here. But in Beijing, it's 40, it says, according to this number. Shanghai, 25, is second, and Shenzhen, 15. If you've been to China, Beijing is the capital city of China, cultural center of China. Shanghai is economic and financial center. And Shenzhen is Chinese Silicon Valley. So that's why blockchain technology actually works quite intensively in those areas. Now here we see that in China we have formed a lot of consortiums. We start to see this should be a, a, a joint effort between technology company startups, and also commercial companies. So that's why they join force working together. And so we have 12 consortiums, and we have 44 financial institutions participate in blockchain consortiums. This is enormous. You know, that in China, you go to China, we drink lots of liquor, right? Gambe, you know, bottom up, that's what Chinese do. So they create through those dinner tables lots of big, large consortiums overnight. And Bitcoin play a major role, as you see and you understand, the Bitcoin are now banned in China because we just trade too much and scare the whole country like into hell. So we see the great interest from the government to really regulate this. Now, before the regulation, the Chinese Bitcoin trading actually pushed the global you know, Bitcoin price to more than 5,000 US dollars. You know, at that point, it stopped trading because, you know, the Chinese government says this is out of whack. And so they're trying to figure out how to deal with that. There are a number of the participants in this conference ask me, you know, when the government is going to lift the ban. My personal prediction, please don't hold on me, is going to be by before the summer of this year. And there's a bunch of smart people in the government is trying to figure out what to do. And I'll explain to you why the government banned this Bitcoin trading. But whoever, you know, own the Bitcoin in the system still, and they think that, gosh, I couldn't sell it. But now maybe they celebrate because I still have Bitcoin there, even though it's not trading. So someone will be super rich later on. Now, I give you a little bit, uh, you know, possible use of blockchain. And in banking, market, selling music, property record, medical record, smart contract, reducing level, and abuses, voting, etc. So this is too small for you to see. 70% of the use case are from the financial purposes. We start to see the financial market in China are very active here. So I'm gonna skip those here. One Xiang group, they pledged 30 billion US dollars for the development of a smart city in Hangzhou. You know, Hangzhou is not considered the internet hub of China. They have a number of the large internet company, including Alibaba Group and Financial Services, and also Wang Yi, NetEase, which is also a very large, large, uh, you know, company based uh, uh, in Hangzhou. So there are lots of large internet company in Hangzhou. So they decided to pledge 30 billion US dollars to develop a smart city there, to really connect everything through internet and also with the help of the blockchain technologies. And they're also launching an accelerator fund for the developers to participate in that. Alibaba Group joined force with PwC to, to prevent food fraud. In China, food fraud and food safety is one of the very severe issues. And sometimes it's very terrifying. Maybe you have read it from the media. So Alibaba Group owned a startup called Erlema, which translated into English as, are you hungry? So that was a very, very unique startup. You know, sometimes in London, uh, you have Pret-a-Manger, which is a French beautiful name. 
But then you also have a British name called Eat, right? That is as simple as it, Eat, right? In China, we have a similar version. We say, are you hungry? Because when Chinese meet each other, we don't say, hi, how are you? Or how do you do, like British gentlemen? We say, are you hungry? You know, or have you eat? You know, this is a Chinese way of doing this. So they have this great name here, and they are using blockchain to trace the food source and trace, you know, the transactions, and that is a wonderful for them to try to solve the problem in China. Zhongwan Blockchain Initiative, its online insurance now have 460 million, you know, 60 million users, imagine. You know, how many people you have here in England? Do you know what's the population here? 70 million, yeah? So here are 460 million users in a very short period of time, 5.8 billion insurance policies that has been underwritten. You know, this is funded by Unfinancial Services, Tencent, PI Insurance. You know, Unfinancial Services is part of the Alibaba Group. And Tencent is a different internet company. They actually compete with each other. Sometimes they hate each other. But for the benefit of the consumer and also their profitability, they join force together to form a consortium here and also join force with the Ping An Insurance, which is Shanghai-based. Uh, so Zhongwan put China's chicken on a blockchain. They are cooperating with 250 farmers. They want to make sure the chickens that's been sold and be cooked are safe. They bring income for farmers 2.7 billion RMB. So that's astonishing by directly applying the blockchain technologies to that. And Alibaba and Ant Financial Services are build, building a blockchain technology on the mobile payment, P2P lending side as well. UnionPay working with IBM. Yeah, they're a blockchain-based system for trading loyalty points here. So the biggest challenge facing industry is regulation. You know, there is a very famous saying, says that America innovates and Chinese duplicates and European regulates. <laughs> you know, Europe is the worst, right? You're against innovation. You're in fight with innovation. China is this... Whenever there's something new, this is an enormous open-minded country. Whenever there's something new, they let it do it. The government says, hey, just do it and try it. And then they figure out how to regulate it, right? But Europe start regulation before you even have an idea, so that's terrible, okay? <laughs> so you should, if you're not happy with Europe, China is open door for you, okay? Visa is still easy, but pretty soon it's not going to be so easy. Now, modern currencies have always been created and regulated by national government. And we see here maps of the regulatory landscape in the world here. You know, uh, as, as you can see here, you know, there's uh, lots of hostile countries here. And in 2016, government banned the, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, Bitcoin trading, uh, the, the ICOs. So there are a few reasons. One is ICO, ICO went out of control. You know, what is the out of control mean? It means like people don't know what to do. Their life is built upon ICO. Everybody want to make money out of ICO from Bitcoin tradings. And people have illusions about life. They lost the real sense of the real life, real society, real community. So that's the problem of out of control. Second, many ICOs are scams. Anyone who touched me, I know an investor, who is one of the most famous angel investors in China. He invests a lot into ICO. And even today, one of the very famous leading investor of angel investor I know, uh, his name is Xu Xiaopi, Mr. Xu Xiaopi. He recently wrote on the blog, and he actually did it in a very clever way. He did an internal circulation, say, please do not share outside of this circle. Whenever you say that, there's some problem. And he said that if you have any money, just put it into it. Well, I realized he actually personally invested a lot into this industry. So maybe he's finding a way out and asking people to buy his ticket out. So the, the mini, this has a lot of danger to the retail investors. And China is also a hotbed for actions. You know, in China, we don't have an industry called a gambling industry. Yeah, we don't have gambling industry. So people are using this as a way of gambling. 
you know, it's every human being's intention to gamble, to make money out of nothing, right? By doing nothing, you make money. That's why people go to Las Vegas, go to Macau. So China, we don't have that. So this became a part of gambling. And China wants to have its own bitcoins for that. So now let me share with you some of the areas for the opportunity. You know, why is the digital payment, second banking trading, and cyber security? Digital payment in 2016, how many of you actually use WeChat Pay? Please raise your hand. Let's give them a round of applause because you are really ahead of the game here. Every time in London, when I see someone writing a checkbook, I want to hold their neck to say that this is 100 years ago when your ancestors invented. Now it's a mobile payment. When you have a touchless you know, credit card, a touchless, you feel celebrated. Oh, we have great innovation here. You go to China, everybody uses a mobile phone. We don't use wallet, we don't use cash. I don't have any cash. You rob me, you find my mobile phone, that's it, right? So. Here, 5.5 trillion payment and 50 times the size of United States of America, which President Donald Trump is serving the president. Okay? So that is incredible. And users are moving away from desktop to mobile device, and mobile payment amount about 75% of total online payment. So Chinese has skipped all this traditional banking. You know, in, in UK, you're the banking center. You love this banking, you know, atmosphere, right? But in China, we say, go to the toilet. Let's use a mobile phone. So that is a big problem. And here, blockchain technology could reduce banking infrastructure. Saving could be among 15 to 20 billion US dollars per annum by 2022 in China. And cybersecurity, in 2016, in the first half, 37% of internet users have suffered economic loss due to the various types of internet fraud. And 84% have experienced some sort of the negative impact. So that is astonishing, you have to see that. Now I want to switch gear to a little bit about marketing about China. See, China used to be the largest economy in the world. 33% of the global GDP in the year of 1820. So that's why everybody say that when China became strong, it may be a threat to the world. I tell you, China was never a threat to the world. You never see Chinese army here to fight against or kill people here. So then China started to really ramp up here, right? So after 1992, then Xiaoping went to Shenzhen to really start to open up the China economic development. I went there in 1991, one year before him, so I'm always proud of myself to be very visionary for that. So here, China, according to British magazine, the Economist magazine, by 2024, China will for the second time pass America to be the largest economy in the world. Saying so, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's much bigger now. And here, this slide shows China has a very strong appetite for the Western technologies. So please do yourself a favor. Don't just innovate here. Go to China because they love you. You go to America and they hate you. They think you are robbing their their food, you know, and they feel that you're competing with them. But go to China, they love you. They welcome you. You know, they make you a celebrity in China. So why, why go to some places that, you know, they love you, and, and, and instead you go to some places that they don't love you? Yes, Chinese consumers love all, look at all those brands. Anything sells, Kentucky Fried Chicken, you know, I have a great story to tell you, but I don't have time there today. And if you were here last time, you, you hear about that. So 50% of world economic growth are coming from China. So China is not just big, but also growing. That is amazing. Then here's a quote from me. Blockchain itself is no longer an innovation. It is a tool. It will be part of the standards in many industries it serves. So don't take blockchain lightly. It will be a standard. It will become a future. So if you are in this industry, you're very lucky and you're doing the right thing, but you need to get access to the large market, which is China, not just here, okay? So finally, I want to sell a little bit about what I do. Our school is the number one business school in China. We, we basically produce billionaires. If you want to be rich, join us. If you don't want, it's okay. You don't need to you know, deal with it. And together, we have more than 10,000 chairmen and CEOs in China joined our school, including Jack Ma studied at our school for two years. 
chairman of Lenovo, chairman of the DD, chairman of you know, uh, uh, you know, CEO of Java Land Rover, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I can name this. We have developed a program for you guys called China Start, and to help you understand China, which is knowledge, find a partner, you know, uh, blockchain partner, and find the funding. So, one, two, three, four, five, one week program in June this year. We visit two accelerators, three cities, and four pitches for investment partners, and five company visits. And we bring more than 100 to 500 investor plus and partners for that. So finally, I want to say this. Thank you for your patience. The reward success, celebrate failure, and punish in action. If you don't go to China, don't regret. Because after a few years, you see people make it in China. And don't say that, oh, you know, I thought that was too risky. I, I tell you, the best way to teach the baby how to swim is to throw them to the swimming pool, OK? It's not, it's not to ask McKinsey to help you to analyze how to do it, right? They produce a stack of papers. Sorry, McKinsey people are here. And, Marco Polo once made a historical you know, travel to China in the 13th century when he was 18 years old. And this guy returned when, you know, 24 years afterward. When he go there, he had no clue how to speak Chinese. He don't know what is China look like. There's no communication with China. He went there. If he didn't make that trip, Europe is no longer Europe like what we see today. So be the modern time Marco Polo. Go to China, you will never be regretted. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.